Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and from the Frederick Health Hospital. Today, we're going to be talking about a case of a STEMI patient with a very torturous RCA. The patient is a 60-year-old man with hypertension who has been having on and off chest pain uh, for the past three days. His wife finally brought him to the ER when he started to develop severe nausea and vomiting. In the ER, his ECG showed marked uh, inferior ST elevations, uh, so the STEMI team was activated. On the diagnostic angiogram, you saw that the uh, RCA is uh, completely occluded in its midsection, uh, but you immediately notice that the RCA is extremely tortuous. Um, there are double shepherd's crooks uh, creating an M-shaped vessel uh, with uh, multiple switchbacks. And unfortunately, the occlusion is distal to all of this uh, tortuosity. So you know you're going to be uh, having a pretty tough time. The um, LED and circumflex, fortunately, uh, were without disease. So uh, you've got your standard issue uh, inferior STEMI equipment, uh, your uh, six French JR4, and your BMW. Your engagement was actually quite good with the JR4, and the BMW wire uh, made it past the first band. Uh, but could not make it around the second band without kicking out your guide. You're uh, getting close to the 90 minute door to balloon time, so instead of switching out your old system, uh, you ask for a guide liner to uh, help improve your backup. Uh, with the guide liner, the uh, BMW um, uh, was able to make it uh, to the occlusion, uh, but uh, completely lost pushability or torqueability uh, through all the bends. Um, so, uh, what do you do now? Well, one issue with uh, tortuous arteries is that the multiple bends uh, increase friction on the body of the wire as you're navigating through the vessel. So uh, there are several approaches uh, that can be useful uh, to help the situation. Uh, first, uh, you can try to lower the friction on your wire. To do that, uh, you use more lubricious wires, such as a Pilot or a Whisper, uh, rather than your BMW. Or uh, you can use microcatheters. Uh, microcatheters protects uh, the wire's body uh, and limits exposure of the wire to the possibly diseased and rough uh, surface uh, of the vessel. Um, second, uh, you can change the tip of your wire. Sometimes a J-tip uh, is useful for pushing through torturous segments by limiting uh, side branch engagement. Uh, soft tip wires are useful for this as well. Third, Again, you can take advantage of a microcatheter to slowly inch your way forward. Uh, the microcatheter will improve your pushability and importantly, also allow you to repeatedly adapt and change the tip of your wire uh, without uh, losing ground. Once you've wired the vessel, uh, the same friction also limits your ability to push uh, equipment such as balloons and stents. Um, so the first thing you can do is to try to increase your backup either with a better guide or with a uh, guide extension catheter. Uh, you can also improve your rail. Uh, you know, use a microcatheter to swap out your initial wire to a stiffer wire and, um, and use that. You can also use a buddy wire. Now, uh, given how hard it was to pass that first wire, passing a second wire de novo as to use as a buddy could be quite challenging. So in these scenarios, I find that dual lumen catheters, such as the Suzuki catheter, can be quite useful. Uh, if your lab doesn't stock uh, dedicated dual lumen catheters, uh, thrombectomy catheters can often do the trick. And the way you do this is you advance your thrombectomy catheter over your first wire uh, using the RX port. And once you're across the lesion, uh, you can deliver the second wire uh, through the uh, thrombectomy port. Um, finally, uh, you may find with a stiffer wire or with a buddy wire uh, that the vessel will actually straighten out. This uh, will often make delivering your equipment a lot easier. Uh, but remember, you got to work quickly uh, because the pseudo lesions uh, can sometimes cause uh, significant uh, ischemia. All right, so as the uh, Beamer made no progress, even with the Guideliner, uh, we decided to uh, switch our uh, system out. Uh, we uh, switched uh, to an AL1 guide for better backup. Uh, we used a guide liner. Uh, we chose a, a Pilot 50 wire, which was more lubricious, and then advanced uh, the uh, Pilot uh, 50 uh, through the vessel uh, using a turnpike microcatheter. The uh, Pilot uh, made it to the lesion fairly easily, uh, but as you can see here, still had trouble crossing 
and uh, was uh, actually still kicking out the AL1 guide uh, even with the uh, guide liner in place. So we uh, switched the uh, Pilot 50 to a Pilot 200 wire, uh, which is stiffer, uh, but still uh, lubricious. Um, with the stiffer Pilot 200 wire now through the turnpike, uh, we can now see uh, pseudo lesions proximally, but this also meant that the vessel uh, has now uh, straightened out. The Pilot 200 crossed the lesion and quickly uh, ran into another uh, loop-de-loop uh, downstream. Uh, the wire actually negotiated that uh, relatively easily, and the turnpike followed remarkably easily. Uh, the proximal vessel straightening probably helped things along. Uh, contrast injection now through the microcatheter uh, demonstrated that we were indeed uh, luminal. And we went ahead and inflated a 2.5 millimeter balloon uh, uh, in the RCA with flow uh, finally established thereafter. Here we can clearly see pseudo lesions uh, from the wiring uh, straightening in the proximal RCA along with a, a segment of severe disease uh, in the mid RCA. Uh, wire string of the vessel uh, made delivery of the long stents uh, relatively straightforward. Uh, again, uh, intentional wire string is actually a useful technique for delivering equipment in a tortuous vessel, uh, but with the pseudo lesions potentially causing ischemia, uh, you do have to work uh, quickly. And we had a, a satisfactory final angiographic result after stenting uh, with a 3.0 millimeter drug link stents. Now, uh, remember that it's important to do intravascular imaging in these cases to make sure that uh, you have not injured the segment uh, with uh, pseudo lesions. In this case, we did OCT. Uh, the pseudo lesion segment was fine and the stent was uh, well uh, expanded and well opposed, although there was a uh, distal uh, step down. Uh, the patient did fine. Uh, he only had mild left ventricular dysfunction uh, with mild inferior hypokinesis, and uh, he was discharged home on hospital day two. All right, take home messages. Uh, tortuous vessels will make your life difficult, especially in STEMIs uh, when you have to work quickly. Uh, the increase in friction uh, will limit your ability to torque your wire and pass your equipment. So to improve your ability to torque your wire, uh, think about using more lubricious wires. So for instance, use a pilot instead of uh, BMWs. Uh, think about J-tipping your wire or use a soft tip wire. And remember that microcatheters can be very useful uh, to inch your base of operations forward and allow you to reshape your wire uh, without losing ground. Uh, to improve your ability to push your equipment, uh, think about uh, improving your backup. Uh, use stronger guides uh, and uh, guide, ca uh, guide extension catheters, such as guide liners. You can use stiffer wires. Uh, you can also try buddy wires, uh, maybe using dual lumen catheters or thrombectomy catheters uh, to facilitate delivery of that second wire. And if, wire, uh, uh, if the wire uh, happens to strain down your vessel, take advantage of that. Uh, this, uh, as uh, this case illustrated, uh, wire straightening of the vessel can make uh, uh, equipment delivery a lot easier. But if one that does happen, uh, you do have to remember to work quickly uh, to avoid uh, extended ischemia. Thank you for watching.